I did grow up riding bikes. It was one of the things we did in our neighborhood. Having a bike as a kid was a great thing. Now, as an adult, you know, riding bikes is great because it's one of the few times where you get to really exercise, get your cardio in. Especially if you do work close, living in California, it's better to bike than to get caught in traffic and just add to the small. I was sous chef at a restaurant down on Ventura Boulevard, and because it's so close to my house, literally like 1.7 miles. I rode my bike to work. When you work at a restaurant, you get off pretty late, 11 or 12 o'clock at night. And when I would ride my bike home, I would get stopped by the police. And the first time it happened, I wasn't really mad. I'm riding my bike up the street at midnight. So I get it, the police stopped me, they ran my information, let me go on about my business. The second time, when the same cop stopped me again and asked me the same questions, like, Obviously, I'm getting off work. You see me riding up the same street at the same time wearing the same chef outfit. Like, you already ran me. You know I live around the corner. Why are you continuing to stop me? I don't ride through Beverly Hills anymore for what? You know, it's like I, when I was going through Beverly Hills, I would always fit the description and get pulled over and have my bike backpack searched and it's like, yo, you fit the description there was a robbery. It was like, yeah, I know, I know the story. Black folks' movement have always been monitored and controlled within this society since we've been in this country, right? So I'm not surprised that I fit the description. You know, I'm not surprised when I get pulled over uh, on a electric bicycle because I didn't want to answer a question from a police officer and end up in jail for the weekend and have my bike confiscated because I didn't feel like dealing with your BS, you know? When I was in DC riding one night, a guy tried to snatch me off of my bike. Um, I've also been stopped by the police uh, on my way to a doctor's appointment one morning. Going towards the Crenshaw Mall, saw the cops and I'm, you know, doing my thing and then I saw them put on the lights and I was confused <laughs> because I'm like, what's happening? Who are they stopping? You know, like, why are they putting, like, I didn't see any cars advance or like any wild, you know, activity. So I definitely was taken aback. Uh, and then the cop got on the loudspeaker and, you know, yelled at me, identified my bike and demanded that I pull over or I would be arrested. And I'm like, what is happening? You know, like what was I doing? You know, as a person who teaches bike safety classes, as a person who is doing all of the things technically that I'm supposed to be doing, I'm riding in the right most of the lane, I'm predictable in my ride, all of this, wearing a helmet, all of these things, you know? Uh, so I'm stopping at the stop sign, stopping at the traffic lights. So why are you stopping me? On a bike, you know? Outside of what can I guess is that you identified this black woman on a bike that maybe you want to harass for whatever reason. It was just really, really off-putting. I was, yeah, just taken aback by the whole experience. So the question is, how safe are black lives, really, riding on bikes? And to look at these issues from a standpoint of changing the way that enforcement is handled in Los Angeles and across the country. It's really alarming that it doesn't matter what kind of mode of transportation they're using, black people face worse safety outcomes uh, when they're driving, when they're walking, and when they're cycling, and that's just not okay. Every transportation planner who is working towards equity in transportation will always tell you this, that transportation in Los Angeles, probably in the United States in general, wasn't planned with black lives in mind. You know, you see this uh, from the way the streets were constructed. You see how freeways were built to dismantle communities of color. Being inside a car feels safer for a lot of people because there's less exposure. And if you're part of a community that has had it made painfully aware to you that the color of your skin is gonna make you a target, for unwanted attention and you know state violence that's just going to play out in an instant who am i to say that they you know should be out on a bicycle or waiting at the bus stop that is a real phenomenon that we absolutely need to to validate for people and take that into account with thinking about street safety there's a lot of things that black people want to do that we enjoy doing but we just don't do 
because we understand the dangers behind it. And that's not going to change until you take out the institutional racism. Just because there's a bike trail or a bike lane doesn't mean we're going to ride. We still have to deal with the same problems, you know? We have a say in how we can co-create our environments to be safer for us now, but also in terms of for the future. And we know that there's probably 100 black cycling clubs that have popped up in the last two or three years. And this is to y'all. I know you ride your bikes. I know you love cycling and you have the resources to do it. You're doing it. You're going to the One Love Rides with your nice road bike and all that. Keep doing that. But there's got to be a way to look at collectively that next generation that's coming up behind you. That's the key. Because we're already in our 40s and 50s. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we're doing it and we should be doing it. We need to figure out how to get 12, 13, 14 year olds into it, or maybe even younger. If I were speaking to a group of black lives about bicycling, I would be encouraged and excited to tell them about my personal experience of bicycling. It has given me strength. It has shown me nature. It has shown me camaraderie. It has shown me pretty much the human spirit, both in myself and in those around me. Bicycling has offered me an enhanced life. But I would also say, be careful. I would say, be strong. And I would say, be brave. And I would encourage you to understand that you control the bike. The bike doesn't control you. Just like life itself, you control your life, you control the bike, but that bike can take you places that you would never imagine. And this life is all about trials and tribulations. You know, it's like, you know, things are gonna challenge you, things are gonna knock you down, and you know, you have to find the resolve and the strength to get back up and continue through it, you know? Yeah, continue to rise and continue to ride, you know? <laughs>